and I guess we're live. Hopefully, good audio levels. I hope. Hopefully, it's not too uh, too messed up. <clears throat> Haven't been doing much live lately because I've been just busy with a whole bunch of stuff. What's up, Alex? Hey, you know what, buddy? Uh, pal, there it is. I got your gift. My cousin Alex, who I got uh, obviously very hooked into Cardano. Took, took forever to ship this thing, but I finally got it. So thank you, this is actually really cool. Um, and it's on my desk, reminding me every day what I'm here for. Um, Rusty, why do you get up early now? Man, it just depends. It depends on what's going on. Uh, you know, I've been getting to bed really late, but last night I fell asleep watching um, True Blood. I started watching the True Blood series from, from the beginning again. It's been years since I'd seen it. It's really, it's so good and it's entertaining, but I, and I was having some crazy dreams last night, I think because I had True Blood going in my ear. <laughs> So a um, lot of stuff going on, a lot of random stuff to discuss and talk about. And of course, I'm going to try and answer all of your questions and chat and just kind of hang out for a while today because I'm, I'm kind of at a wall. I'm waiting for emails from different people, still grinding out everything associated with launching this Bitcoin ATM. I went ahead and I filed yet another LLC. And uh, as soon as that's ready, then I got to file with FinCEN and I got to do, uh, there's all kinds of stuff. I've got a lawyer that's ready to start writing out my compliance policy package. Just a lot of stuff going on. And I still haven't, fi I still haven't figured out exactly what um, direction I'm going to go in terms of my machines. I, I have like three options and I'm, I, I'm going to let everybody know in a video, uh, like who I go with and why, and kind of what my experience was in getting to where that is. So, uh, Natasha's in the house. What's up? I know Natasha was letting me know that she's going to be leaving town for a little while. Um, and uh, going on a vacation or something. Audio is wonderful. Oh, well, that's good to know. Thank you for that. Because I, I, I'm, I'm always trying to tweak it and make it a little better. And I, I got rid of the gate because it kept messing with things and because I have to have a fan going. I just, I had, and that's been my struggle. I have to have a fan because when this light is just beaming down on me, it is so hot and uh, I have to have a fan or I just can't stay on live very long. So anyway, looking at Bitcoin's doing really well. Uh, I'm, I was actually very pleasantly surprised and it did look like we wicked down to clear that CME futures gap. So, um, and I, I, so the video that I published this morning about understanding Cardano staking, uh, a murder of crows strategy that's been released on Crow Trader, which I'm going to do some back testing and kind of experiment while I just hang out. Like I figure I, I'm just going to hang out and do what I had planned to do this afternoon. Also, for those of you guys interested, Market Cipher is having a huge deal. So, um, you can click the link. There's a link in my description, and um, you can check out Market Cipher. It's like half off. So, uh, and as I understand it, you click the link below, and it's automatically going to register for you, like with the discount. So, if you're into Market Cipher and you're into manual trading and and uh, you're doing leverage trading at all, things like that, Market Cipher could be really helpful to you. So, make sure you check that out. Um, just this is a 15 minute chart and we've just been we've just been climbing man like it's just been going really well uh and we're we're working on perfecting things this i'm not using i don't even know what happened to him he just kind of like stopped talking um <laughs> he just stopped talking i don't even know what happened so we've gone a different way um but anyway yeah i'm basically going to be doing some crow trader back testing with the new murder of crow strategy i'm going to be playing with that while i'm just basically answering questions and kind of hanging out today so there's no real particular goal or mission for this i just figured it's been a while since i've just gone live and hung out so are you are you big on badao seven exchange listings to go i don't i still haven't looked into video badao i I know people like to spam my comments and stuff maybe it's you i don't know but i i haven't even bothered looking into it um I actually caught you online for once. Hey, Crow, what's up? Uh, Koo Heidi, <laughs> Koo Hi HD, uh, get some lead light. This is an LED light. 
Oh, I have an LED light right here, which is like booming. It doesn't look like it because I'm not lit up like the sun because it's kind of high because I just, I hate it like blasting me right in the face. But then I have another one behind me that kind of lights up the, the my my green wall behind me so that it, you know, the green screen's a little crispier. So that's kind of the trick there. Uh, why were you arrested eight times? Yeah, that's total nonsense. I saw that. And I, I was kind of like, so I, I, I saw that on uh, Charles Hoskinson's live AMA, and there's some guy on there who, like, every time I go on there, he's like, Crypto Crow was arrested eight times, and I'm like, are you out of your mind? Like, where do you even come up with this stuff? There was, and, I, and, I, and, and Charles was like, I don't care. Like, you know, like, he didn't really know what to make of it, but he was just like, I don't care. He's always been good to me. And I, and I thought, man, this is total nonsense. But there was a point when I was a kid where I had like 36 points on my license. And and I don't know if that's even what he was, but I wasn't arrested eight times. I just, I, like, it was a mess though. Cause what happened was when I was a kid, I don't even remember how old I was. I know I was old enough to, cause I was a bouncer in bars at the time. So I was at least 18, but I remember I got this new card. Yeah, he kept posting that. I know it is like it's just an idiot. But anyway, so I was so I used to live in Indiana, and when you go to like Cincinnati to from Indiana, you go through Kentucky. So you go Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. It's just kind of the way the tri-state works. And um, there was one one night or one day in particular where I was flying. There was this road. I don't remember if it was in Kentucky. I think it was in Kentucky heading into Ohio, but it's this, it's the part of the highway and it's like a downward hill. And if I floored it, <laughs> I could get really booking like over a hundred miles an hour. So I got pulled over twice within like an hour and a half that day. And I, for whatever reason, the first ticket I got didn't, I, I didn't learn from it. And I just kept going and I was booked. I had a lead foot when I was a kid. I don't know. I was crazy and I thought I was invincible. So anyway, long and short of it is I did get two tickets. Well, I paid them both immediately. Ohio was like, okay, thanks. Kentucky lost it. So because they lost it, then they ended up putting out a, uh, a suspended license on me. They suspended my license. That snowballed because then I started getting pulled over all the time on my way home from work. Like I would leave the bar and it'd be like, you know, three, three thirty AM. And there's always some bored cop on the highway, just waiting for a passerby and they would get behind me and then they'd run my tags and they'd be like, Oh, I pulled you over because you ha apparently have a suspended license. And I'm like, Oh, I, the first time I, I, I was like, what? No, I don't. And that just snowballed because it became like this principal thing for me where I'm like, screw you. I paid this. That should be done. That's your fault. You guys need to figure it out. I was young. So anyway, by the time, by the time I finally ended up going to court for this, um, I got a lawyer and my lawyer spent like six months trying to sort through all of this craziness and he was like a personal like a personal defense attorney like because i was in this really bad wreck where this guy he went through a red light and he was in a big truck i was in a dodge avenger at the time and it put the front end of my car under my steering wheel broke my nose busted me up really bad but anyway so it was my attorney that helped handle that he ended up going to court to fix my points i had all these points on my license because i kept getting pulled over for driving under suspension when i shouldn't have been suspended so anyway the long and short of it is it was such a mess he actually got the judge to dismiss all of it because he was like your honor i have gone through i tried to i've traced this all the way to the beginning it looks like this is what started it this is what happened and the judge was like okay fine and that was the end of it they wiped my points gave me my license back and everything was fine but that went on for I don't know, maybe a year or two. I don't remember. It was a while, but I was just like, screw you guys. Like, you guys need to get your shit together. I'm, I I paid that as soon as I got it. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had, like, when I was a kid, I had, like, you know, I might punch somebody in the face or <laughs> something like that. I mean, 
I was, uh, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, a lot of that stuff is just nonsense. Can we talk about crypto now? Me, 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 me. I'm going to talk about whatever. This is a hangout. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to talk about all kinds of stuff. I might talk about your bad attitude. How about that? I can talk about that today. Um, so anyway, Ohio is notorious for speeding tickets. Kentucky, you can just pay at the roadside. Well, keep in mind, this was like 20 years ago. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of new stuff happening now that, that wasn't possible then. Um, AGI, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, yeah, I'm from West Virginia and I've gotten two tickets in Ohio. <laughs> I haven't had a ticket in hell i don't know has it been a decade now i mean i i haven't had any i oh, i did get a ticket actually i got a seatbelt violation two years ago because i was driving and a cop had somebody pulled over and i'm like i'm like driving by now when you pass a cop and they are on a shoulder so with somebody pulled over you're supposed to get over into the next lane and give them room to operate well, and I and I went to start doing that, but some other car was like flying by me to my left, and I saw him coming, and I could tell he was going pretty quick. And so I didn't get over, and then I kind of panicked a little bit because I'm like, I'm in the right lane, there's a cop, and I and I panicked a little bit. And as and I so I ended up passing the cop. Well, the cop ends up walking around the car, looks at me and goes, "What the fuck?" Like I was an asshole. And I was just like, ah, sorry, like what? I don't know what to tell you. Sorry, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't close to him. I just didn't get into the next lane. So anyway, next, ne like within a minute, the cop is like up, up behind me, pulls up to the side of me and does one of these numbers. And he looks to see if I was wearing my seatbelt. Sure enough, he pulls me over runs my license, runs everything. And he was an asshole at first. Then by the time he gets back to his car, he comes back and he's nice as can be out of nowhere. I even asked the cop friend of mine, like, what happened here? And he was like, oh, you know, the officer probably had time. He went to his car, you know, looked you up, saw you didn't have anything going on and, you know, had an opportunity to cool down. But he still gave me a seatbelt violation. Um, but yeah, that was like the most recent thing that's ever happened. Um, have you done a video on setting up your wallet to stake on the crow pool? Yes, I have. There's one in there. How to stake Cardano on the crow node, I think it's called. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, Singularity Net Token. Okay. No, I haven't done a video on that yet. I, I did a video about Cardano um, and how they've been kind of working together, but I haven't done a video specifically on AGI yet. Yeah, that threw me for a minute because I'm thinking AGI. I, I'm thinking like CGI. I'm like, I don't know. Um, LOL, I like this guy. <laughs> you must be new here. Uh, yeah. So while you guys are coming up with questions, I'm going to try and, and I'm just going to... What I'm thinking of doing is going through and... Um, just creating i don't know i was going to create an excel sheet and do a back test on every pair on binance and uh yeah do do a a back test on every pair on binance and see what happens um we're going to go a month. We're going to leave the gain at 100. Because some of these, some pairs work really well. Some don't at all. No trades were made. Let's go with a 30 minute. I don't even know what that is. BKRW. I have no idea what that even is. Let's go with something a little more. Uh, starting capital. That sucks. I hate having to change that over and over. Um, we'll just have 1,000 BNB. Who knows? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm, need those seat belts on our way to the moon <laughs> while wow, i was just listening to your ada video and saw you were live i got two good minutes before work <laughs> sorry adam yeah i don't go live very often i i haven't um i am interviewing oh wow this is pretty nice 
Uh, well, thirteen point four percent over buy and hold, so that's not that great. That's basically if you were buy if you bought B and B and were holding it and then trading it against Cardano's volatility. Uh, but all those trades are at least. Let's see what happens if I increase the gain. Let's just increase it two percent and see how that changes. One of these days, I'll do a like fully in depth video about this. Now we're at 14.6. Let's change it to a 4% gain. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm running this strategy and I'm saying, okay, I don't want to get out of a trade until I'm at least at a 4% gain or thereabouts and uh, on a 30 minute chart. There we go. Pow. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Total percent gain of 25.74% over a 19% buy and hold yeah i like it like that so that's one two three four five trades all of which are over four percent one of them is at almost eight percent one's at 5.2 percent see that's why i like this because and now this is over a month so this is a 25 percent gain over a month using crow trader and that's just trading b and b token against ada on a 30 minute chart so yeah, that's what I'm messing with now. I actually, I, I just set up a trade with uh, Bitcoin against USD Tether and I'm using this strategy. I think I even set it at like a 6% gain and I let it rip and, it, and so it's actually, it just entered its first trade um, this morning. So I'm pretty pumped about this. I, I honestly think that the murder of crow strategy on crow trader is gonna like rock the market. And I really do think it's gonna just kill um crypto crow rebel with a crypto cause your license plate should be badass bye i gotta go to work <laughs> uh either you skip question or you didn't see going to ask again Ooh, people get testy if you uh i did answer that what are you talking about willis Crow, I have a chainwise subscription but this is the second month and you haven't added new content i feel all alone uh there am i the only subscriber well five dollars is okay but you have to add new stuff yeah i you know i've been i want to add new stuff it's like but it doesn't seem like anybody really cares about it i mean i added some really badass content to that to change it's chainwise.us for those of you um it's like in order for me to like really keep pumping in exclusive content and such on there I, you're right though I, I i i will this month i'm gonna add some stuff um it's just it's just difficult because like if there's no demand like if i were see what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to do something like udemy without it being udemy but i I could do the same thing on Udemy and do extremely well, but I thought, well, it would be, but I can't, but there's no real community there. So people can't really interact with each other. They can't learn from each other. So I thought, well, I'll try to build my own community at chainwise.us and instead of doing like a crazy one-off price, I'll do a really tiny monthly and see what I can build from that. But it's like, it's just not getting that much attention. People just aren't caring. I, I think people will start caring when I start doing exclusive, like how I made a thousand dollars this weekend using Crow Trader, you know, exclusive, you know, whatever, Outlook or whatever. I mean, but I don't really want to do that kind of stuff. I prefer keeping that kind of stuff to YouTube. Um, so it's more about educational courses and things like that. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure something out. Uh, when you stake Cardano from your ledger, is it possible to send out ADA while it's being staked from the ledger wallet? Mm, that's a good question, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe ask Charles during an AMA. I'm sure he'll be able to answer that. I, I don't know because I don't stake with a ledger wallet, so I really couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. Um, happy to see you're putting out more crowbot content <clears throat> what's up steve and ivan uh yeah i mean kind of it's in passing it's in passing while i'm hanging out live for a little while saying hi to everybody it's been a while uh chat do you think about h bar <laughs> i don't know what's up jason carter the jason carter not the other one the jason carter delegating ada today based on your videos well that's good i appreciate that definitely need to be staking your cardano if you own it and if you don't own it it's probably a good idea to look into it 
Uh, what do you think about Thailand using SHR for COVID passports? So tourists have to buy an e-visa and will result in buybacks on the sharing network. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about this. Uh, interesting. Maybe it's something worth looking into. How can we use Crow Trader? Well, you got to get it first. It's at crowtrader.com. And, um, and then make sure you join the Telegram group because that's where my, my developer, everybody that's just been involved in like the back end, everybody, they're all in the Telegram group and they're extremely helpful. And not only that, but like quite a few of the members of the Crow Trader community are insanely helpful and they share strategies. Like it's so easy, like I can take this. So I just got almost 26% gains on my Murder a Crow strategy, settings, options, I can save this. So there's my strategy, I save it. Now, if I want, I can share it, boom. All I have to do is copy this. So I'm gonna copy this right now. So I just copy that to the clipboard and then I'm gonna open up Telegram and share that right to the, uh, right to the community. Bam, done. So if you're in the Telegram crew, uh, Crow Trader community, you just got a strategy that'll do exactly what I just did here. And it's that simple. That's how easy it is to share strategies now. Like it's stupid. And it, and it's like, and that's ultimately what we're trying to build this thing out to be is like, we want this to be like, you get, you you do a really solid back test. You're seeing some possible, some really good gains. Um, share them with the community so that other people can load them up and try them out. That's what it's really all about. I just, I want so many people to use Crow Trader and just do really, really well with it. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> how do i delegate to multiple pools um i mean i think delegating to multiple pools you just you click delegate and you type in how much uh how much you want to delegate to the pool i'm pretty sure i don't think it i don't think it automatically grabs the entire wallet amount i think you can kind of say i want to delegate this much and then you can delegate more to another pool it's the same process you're just not automatically you're not automatically selecting the same uh, or everything in that wallet. Um, okay. Been wanting to jump in on Crowbot. I have the bot. Going to use it more soon. Yeah, dude, you should like check it out because I'm I'm starting. I'm using it a lot more actively now because we're getting ready to. We've got a bunch of people testing DCA which has been one of the biggest things holding me back. I gotta have DCA functionality. And for those of you that, you that don't know, it's dollar cost averaging. So basically if I go into a trade and then let's say Bitcoin pumps and then the altcoin either stays where it's at or even goes down, well, I wanna basically be able to double down on that altcoin position. Let's say I'm, my, that trade is down negative 30% against the Bitcoin I originally used to buy the alt. Well. Now I want to basically double down on that holding. So I'm lowering how like the negative percentage. So maybe I'm down 30%, but then if I double down on that alt at, at a lower price with more Bitcoin, now my, my, my negative is maybe negative 20% or negative 15%. And the more I DCA into that position, I'm lowering my overall uh, my lower overall cost per coin, right? So now instead of me having to wait until either Bitcoin drops back down or the altcoin rises 30%, now it's much easier for Bit maybe Bitcoin comes down 10%, that altcoin comes up 10%, boom, now I've met that that um, sell target with profit. And so DCA is, a sig when I was running profit trailer, I mean, I was running a four tier DCA. And what would happen is, is when there was a big market separation between Bitcoin and an altcoin, it would just automatically double down, double down, double down until they met. And then typically when that altcoin did pump again, which almost always happened, I would be a crazy profit and I'd have days where I'd make 1500 bucks. So <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's insanely important to me. So once this kicks off in my live trades, uh, you're going to see me really busting out some Crow Trader content for sure. Uh, what are the best, most trusted decentralized exchanges for us people to use? 
That's a good question. Um, I don't really use a lot of the decentralized exchanges. Uh, you know, I know that IDAX was big back in, you know, it was like one of the first ones, but I know that they ran into some troubles and I don't know how they've recovered. So yeah, how about that paid advertisement? Taco Swap, you know much about MM, MXX Multiplier Finance? I'm still learning. Look, here's the thing about a lot of the, the DeFi kind of paid promotions that I've been doing. Like, some of these projects do look legit, but I, there's no way to know 100%. Like in the one that I did this morning um, for Unistake, it looks like a very, very well thought out business model and a well-structured smart contract. And it's been audited and all of this other fun stuff. And that's all cool, but I don't know who created it. And that to me is a big thing. I wanna know like who are the team, like just because it's decentralized to me, um, when you're talking about, a, like, I know that the idea fundamentally is for a decentralized application, it's not about the creators, right? But when you're talking about the the beginning level, like the starting level, the, uh, the initial hoorah of this DeFi uh, model, it is important for me. Oh, excuse me. It is important for me to know who these people are. It just is. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, I just want to know. I just want to know who the people are that are creating these things. Um, thank you. It looks a very interesting community and tool for use of trading. I have watched you some of your videos, but didn't realize you had this whole platform and everything. Um, yeah, I, I've spent the entire bull market. Like, I'm not really a great YouTuber. I mean, I'm not, and, and I, there, are, there are others who do a fantastic job of delivering um, interesting and intriguing content. What I am is I'm just a straight up dude trying to make my way, and I share in my experience. I'm more of a business development type of person, uh, a marketing person. Uh, you know, I, I have done, you know, a lot of like sales training and, and just all sorts of stuff like that. I'm more about developing business, and so, a lot of what I do is, you know, as I'm learning and I'm doing new things, I try to share that wealth. If I, if I, you know, if I'm doing well on a project or I'm doing well on a product or something like that, I like to share that. Um, you know, Crow Trader is my bot. I partnered with another group uh, uh, like a while back, and um, we've created this specifically for my market, for my users, because I love automated bot trading. I used to think it was fake back in the day when I first got into crypto. And uh, I would see stuff like GunBot and this and that. And I'm like, is this stuff even real? Is this legit? And so I experimented with a lot of different bots and a lot of different things. And, and uh, yeah, I just got really deep into it. And then I, as an affiliate, we sold so I sold so many copies of uh, like Profit Trailer and the Profit Feeder add-on and all that stuff that I basically, I, I said, I want I want my own bot and I want my bot to be much easier to use for people. I want it to be really easy to share um, strategies that people in the community discover as profitable. And uh, so that's what we've been building and we've been doing it for a while now. We've had um, sales and, and discounts and alphas and betas and, and we're always testing new features. And so, yeah, I, I love it. I do. I, I consider bot trading like treasure hunting. I really do. It's like treasure hunting. So, yeah. Hey, it's my first time here. Happy to be part of this movement. Well, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Eloise? My wife would know. My wife is so good with, like, cultural names and, ethnic, you know, just different parts of the world and everything. I don't know. Elo Eloise Lee. I, I, I don't know. I probably butchered that. I am sorry. Um. How do you account for taxes with Crow Trader? The same way you would with any manual trading. You're basically just going to do an export of your transactional activity on that exchange. And, and, and you can import that into a lot of the crypto tax software or platforms out there, and it'll calculate your P&L for you that you just give to your accountant. It's really not that difficult. Um, I know, I know uh, the, for I think it was 2018 when I did all of the, the taxes for like 2017, it was either that or it was 2019 doing 2018, I don't remember, but there was like, I had like millions of dollars in bot trading volume. <laughs> And it was all like little trades, man. I mean, it was like, 
but it was so rapid fire that it was just it was insane so my accountant he was like you got to go and set this up and do this on this software and it'll you know <laughs> he's like i'm not doing this with a calculator dude it was like i'll i don't remember it would have been like something like 60 something pages so i had to like there's software that you can use and it just calculates your PL and and um you send it to your accountant and they take it from there so it's really not that difficult it sounds daunting but it's not uh i use binance um coinbase pro while we while you can use it uh for crow trader does not like small transactions so they're gonna really ream you in fees Binance fees are substantially less <clears throat> and the Binance APIs and everything associated with Binance is generally a lot faster than using Coinbase Pro and if you're trading less than 10,000 bucks uh, per trade Coinbase is going to chew you up in fees so and because of that it's a lot more difficult to get in and out of profitable positions on Coinbase than it is Binance so yeah um, gonna start using it again, but please put more videos on the strategies. Okay. Hey, if you guys ask for it, I'm down for it. I just, I hate, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get to a hundred thousand subscribers on my channel. I just broke 89,000 today. So I'm 11,000 subscribers away and I, and I really want to hit that mark. And I'm afraid sometimes of putting out content that I know is only going to like get a thousand views and not many people care. Like, um, but I, I mean, if there's, if, if more, as more and more people are getting the bot and using it and the crow trader community is growing on telegram um then yeah i will definitely start putting out a lot more content for it really enjoy your videos crow keep up the good work what are your thoughts on bill Barr's recently released task force on cryptocurrency well let's see well that was on june 26th uh june 27th i mean this doesn't hold on anti-government Oh, let's try it. Let's add crypto and see. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> let's see what this says, because I haven't read it. U.S. government moves to regulate cryptocurrencies after Attorney General publishes enforcement framework. All right. Let's take a look. United States Attorney General William Barr says the recent publishing of the cryptocurrency enforcement framework will help law enforcement to fight elements using digital currencies for illicit ends. Produced by the AG's Cyber Digital Task Force, the framework provides law enforcement with what Barr terms a comprehensive overview of the emerging threats and enforcement challenges associated with the increasing prevalence and use of cryptocurrency. The publishing of the framework comes as U.S. regulators have been ratcheting up pressure with BitMEX executives and John McAfee being the latest casualties of the new approach. Still, top U.S. officials, including FBI Director Christopher Wray, pay a homage to this revolutionary technology, which they say is important and promising. In his remarks, Ray indicates that new enforcement framework is only aimed at individuals that facilitate illicit trade using cryptocurrencies. I mean, already, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's about time. I mean, honestly, there's just too much, man. There's too much. Uh, I don't see how we're ever going to truly reach a positive mass adoption in cryptocurrency until the sentiment overall is that it is much safer to get into. Every day I'm in crypto, especially as a YouTuber, I feel like... I feel like I'm being watched. I feel like um, people are always, um, I feel like people are always looking for ways to like scam, rob, cheat, steal. I mean, you name it. And it's like, and I honestly, I feel like in America, I almost feel like we are fish in a bowl, you know, or, or it's just, 
or fish in a barrel in a sense because we have all these other countries and these hackers and these frauds and all the, all these different people and they and they're just I don't know, man. Like I'm watching True Blood all the time, and I feel like I'm like a feeder fawn or something like that for all these vampires. And you know, it's like America. We've been so slow about everything when it comes that we we were sure quick to tax the shit out of it. But outside of that, they you know nobody's really cared. And I don't know if like do they say well we need to tax the hell out of this first and start generating revenue to then be able to fund the task force uh, to start fighting like for security and you know I don't know how all that stuff works in government I just know that as soon as crypto started getting big boom the IRS started taxing the hell out of it and now we're starting to see task forces and and different groups and yeah more power to them man I mean I. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say other than that. I mean, it's about time because I, I'm tired of feeling threatened every day, every all the time when I'm in crypto. I just I constantly feel threatened, and not only that, I want to see, I want to see us actively going after international threats. You know, like I, you know, what I'm really more concerned with about any, than anything right now though is going to war with China. That's legitimately a fear of mine right now. Um, and and I, I'm not saying it's going to end up becoming like a big world war or anything, but we're definitely amping up to go to war for China. And here's the thing, even, even as far as like Rona, let's just say Rona was a, a, a you know, a more subtle act or a, or a more sneaky act of war um, on, on the United States or even on international economies because they were trying, you know, they're trying to do whatever. If, if we were to admit that China intentionally released this virus, as I understand it, our law dictates we have to go to war with them. Like, you, it, it's, it's like a tit for tat. You, you attack us, we have to attack you. We are the superpower, we don't back down. And you're also talking about Trump at the helm. So, you know, I think there's a lot of hoopla uh, with, with Trump to some degree. I think he likes to do a lot of barking. Um, and, and I'm not calling him a coward or anything because I don't think that's the case, but I think he's I think he's a little more wise than he lets on. Um, I, I definitely think there are sides to Trump that he absolutely, and I'm not even a for Trump guy. I'm not a for, I feel like all these politicians are scum buckets. I mean, I really do. Um, and, and, but, you know, I, I'm really caught or I'm always caught. I'm always caught when it comes to some of these politicians. I mean, I look at somebody, you know, he, he just vomits, he vomits at the mouth, everything that comes to his mind. And I personally like that because I feel like that's just, to me, it's just more trustworthy than somebody who's very cautious, very reserved, mining every word, uh, you know, trying to just like play word games and stuff. I, I'm not with that, that whole political thing where everybody is kind of cultivated and programmed to be a very particular way so that they capture the interest of this group or that group and everything's very just calculated i'm not with that and that's one of the reasons i think i sympathize with trust with trump more than just about any other politician because he does vomit at the mouth even though he's an arrogant ass um you know and uh, but I'm I'm like truly concerned about going to war with China. I really am because I think it's I think it's coming. Um, do you still mine Aeon? Uh, I am not currently mining Aeon. No, I'm not currently mining Aeon. Um, who are your favorite top three YouTubers? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I like Crypto Zombie. Uh, I really do like Crypto Zombie. Um, I, I like, I like crypto face. I mean, say what you will guys crazy as hell, but he's really good hearted. Like I talk to crypto, uh, crypto face a lot and we have like, we'll just hang out on zoom and just shoot the shit and talk about life and talk about trading and talk about other YouTubers and all kinds of stuff. And he's just I just really like him, man. Like, I want to hang out with him. I want to get to know him even on a more personal level. I want to go out and just, like, hit the town and, you know. But he's just, he's just, I like him a lot. I really do. Um, his way is so kooky. Like, you think, 
you think it's like an act or something, but it's not. He's just a very kooky, very, I think he's actually a really good hearted guy. I really do. Um, and you know, of course he's a businessman. I mean, he's trying to make his way and, and, and he's, you know, here it is market cipher. He, you know, like I'm only doing this just because like, I, I still like it. I'm experimenting with other stuff, but I, I market cipher has always been my favorite manual indicator. I mean, it, it is legitimately. So, um, and they they've come out with this new guide too that's like boss i'm actually going to go through it myself because i've been telling him like you need a really good guide and so he had one created and it's sleek it's n way nicer than even the one i made so uh i made one for him just to try and help out uh who else um crypto zombie i really like i like um benjamin cowan uh, I actually reached out to him really early on because he was doing some, he's like a, I think he's like a PhD mathematician or something like that. And he's not, if you ever sees this, I love you, dude. He's not Mr. Personality. Okay. He's a numbers guy, but he's wicked, wicked smart. And he definitely knows his stuff and he, he's grown substantially. And I've, I've tried plugging him many, many times, um, you know, because early on he was just not getting many views on his videos. And I think he's established himself as somebody who really understands kind of, um, just a lot of, uh, like the history, the numbers and so forth. Oh, Ben Cowan, yeah. <clears throat> and I reached out to him early on. I'm like, dude, you need a new camera. You need a microphone that sounds better. Um, and I and I just gave him different tips and things, and I, you know, hoping that it helped him out. And he and he adopted some of them, and he's been growing uh, since. So yeah, I like him. Um, I know there are others. I just haven't really thought about it. Uh, who else do I like? Mm, you know, believe it or not, I actually do like Crypto Kirby. I mean, I just, I like watching him. Even if it's just for entertaining, like, <clears throat> I like his perspective on things. I don't trade on anything he says, but I like, I like his perspective. And I like the way he explains a lot of things. You degenerates. <laughs> uh, I've been on tech. I really like too. I, I like, I really like Trevon James. I know a lot of you guys hate him now, but I really like Trevon James. Uh, Trevon is just, Trevon James reminds me, um, <clears throat> he really dives into and gets into and has a lot of fun with stuff a lot of people ignore. And I, I learn about interesting new dApps and and different things uh, from just popping into his channel every now and then and see what he's up to. I just really like him, and and I was really happy that he that he came on and he did the interview with me because I think that was only like the second interview he's done. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like him or not, I like him, and and I you know I don't really care. Obviously, I love BitBoy. Um, BitBoy and uh, Crypto Wendy O and I are all going to be doing something very soon uh, that I'm pretty sure is going to be on like Fox Business and Bloomberg and all that. I think we're actually shooting that Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I don't know when that's going to air, but it, it should be pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that. BitBoy is one of those guys, man, who he gets a lot of hate because he does do a lot of clickbaity shit in his titles and stuff, but it works and you know what somebody was talking stuff about him doing paid content and uh look bit boy <clears throat> he's one of the most sincere dudes and if you meet him in person <clears throat> he is like a uh gosh i don't even know how to like kind of categorize him but he is somebody who i feel like really defends he defends the crypto space <clears throat> he calls it like he sees it and he has this comedic tongue-in-cheek kind of methodology to all of his stuff he doesn't take himself super seriously even though his content is generally pretty serious if that makes sense um <clears throat> i mean we've got picture my wife has pictures of him in a like a bit boy superhero costume at a freaking convention you know what i mean and you know we we rib each other all the time and i i just i love bit boy i always have and i told him i'm like dude because there was so long where he was spending countless hours making content for his channel, um, like animated stuff and joke videos, all kinds of stuff, but even, but informative too. 
and he was not getting views. And I told him, I'm like, dude, you stay at it. You stick with it. I, I, I had the same talk with Crypto Zombie because he wasn't very, he wasn't doing very much early on either. And I met him in Vegas. I had the same talk with him. I'm like, just keep at it. I said, it, the same way I have talks with people who want to invest in crypto or they invested in the last bull market and they missed the mark or they got in late. It's the same thing. This is a cycle. You know, I'm all worried about getting to 100,000 subscribers. I know I'm going to get there. You know, it's just, we're just, we're, we're, you know, things are starting to gradually pick up across the board. And a lot of these guys who are really just hustling and bustling and doing what they could in the bear market when nobody was paying attention, the more people are starting to pay attention. These guys have honed in on their craft, man. I have not. I try. And I actually get really depressed about it because I... I don't. I have. I have Crow Trader. I, I have. I have. I have another platform in development. I'm trying to launch an ATM business. I have a lot of different things that take up my time, and so I'm trying to turn that stuff into content that helps everybody. Uh, but I'm just not good on like clickbait. Um, type content that actually matters uh, to some degree. So. You know, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, I mean, I like all those guys, and there are others. I I don't even I don't even know. Um, I won't even name the ones I don't like, but there are there are quite a few actually that I don't care for very much. Um, I just feel like the, there are a lot of these guys that I feel are very misleading in what they do overall, and um, they try to to be something that I just don't think they really are and they profit from it quite a bit. And I, but I'm not, I'm not somebody to like troll other people really. Uh, so anyway, yeah, there, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, hi Crow first time bull run coming up. I have so many questions about exiting in large amounts. Do you stable coin stable coin to fiat? Do you get taxed twice for that? Um, Hmm. <laughs> Adam R creeping in crow live stream while I'm at work. Shh, don't tell Trump. So <clears throat> as I understand it, any taxable, any, any transfer from one crypto to another or from crypto to fiat, all of that is a taxable event, but it's, it only matters if there's profit. From what I understand, like sending crypto from one wallet to another wallet isn't. But if there's a transaction, you're converting one to another, and especially if it's at profit for some reason, um, then it could be considered a taxable event. So you talk to your accountant because it, this is going to depend on where you live. You know, like ask, asking tax questions. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. I'm not a licensed tax anything. I'm not a licensed anything. I'm just a dude on the interwebs. Okay. But talk to like talk to your CPA, your accountant, your whoever handles your taxes and ask them because it's gonna it could it's just it's gonna depend on where you're at, honestly. So it's a tough question. Do I stable coin? I do. I trade uh, with stable coin sometimes. It just depends on what I'm what my goal is. <clears throat> Smash that like button. Yeah, like you know, sometimes if I've got a clickbaity title for my AMA, I'll have I can have like a few hundred people in my live chat, but for for right now there's only 74 people in here, which is really low. So it's like hard for me to be like, yeah, I need to go live a lot because everybody loves it. Like I planned on going live for a while today. Um, his sense of humor is amazing. Yeah, I, you, you can't not like BitBoy. If you don't like BitBoy, you you probably just don't like yourself and you're deflecting. Like that's kind of the way I look at BitBoy. Uh, Crow sounds like everyone crypto dad. We all go for him for a little out of boy or tough love. <laughs> Hoo -ah. uh, you are my favorite crypto YouTuber. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Met BitBoy at Chainwise. All the people I follow, I met at Chainwise. Thanks. That's cool, man. Yeah, I mean, all these guys are super cool. I love Crypto Beatles, too. I forgot to mention him. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Crypto Beatles is super cool. Um, just hire a team to help you. I, and I, I might. Honestly, oh, I hate to be this way. Crypto Lark is super smart. He's a smart guy. His way, to me, feels cringy. <laughs> um, 
and I oh I, I and I I like him like in in the, here's the thing like I know my way is cringy to some people the way I'm just kind of like blah I just vomit words I just say whatever I can get emotional I can go on an emotional rant I can you know like I, whatever I'm all over the place and I, I'm very well aware I had I saw somebody comment how my voice was annoying yesterday and I'm like well happy good afternoon to you too like you know it, it, different strokes for different folks. I think Crypto Lark means very well. I think his intent is solid. I think what I know of him, he's very legitimate. Uh, it's just difficult for me to watch that kind of personality type because I'm not a good teleprompter guy. Um, and like, I, I understand that, I mean, I'm looking into one right now. It's not, I'm not using it for anything. It's just how I'm set up in case I ever want to do another teleprompter type video for or an intro or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, man. I have absolutely nothing against Crypto Lark at all. I think he does a hell of a job and I think he's, he's very informative. He's grown insanely well. I mean, all these guys are growing far and above me. So I'm to me, I'm like, like a you know uh i'm just i'm just a dude i'm just some big dude on the internet like I, i'm not special i will blow up more when crow trader is starting to really crank when you know all the stuff that i've i'm up to is starting to do really well and i'm showing everybody how to make a lot of money again that's when i've shined because i'm so straight up about everything that you know <clears throat> that's when i really shine uh <clears throat> Holly P, Chain Wise was my first such live event since he was just too cold that weekend. <laughs> you can de deduct a loss as well. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, it was a beautiful weekend in Cincy. Weather was great. Uh, it, I like you because you like the, you're like the only bear will ever pinch. I'm not sure what you meant by that, Ira. <laughs> Something about me get, get, getting pinched by a bear. Uh, Columbus Day, no nine to five today. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's cool. Cringy, nerdy is his style. You are too big to be cringy. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, cringy, nerdy is his style. Like I said, I, I have abs. I like. I like him. I've never met him personally. I'm sure he's super cool and funny, uh, and all that. But yeah, of course, I like Supo Man. You know, Sue. I. You know. <sighs> Supo man is cool and and I think he I don't know man it's really difficult cuz he I just don't even know where Supo man's head is anymore like honestly I really don't I used to really love tuning in and watching Supo man's perspective on new projects and things and ever since he just like straight up capitulated hard I'm like <clears throat> I know how it can be really difficult to not lose faith in the crypto market, but you know, not everything is going to be perfect all the time. You know, it's, it's not everything is going to be perfect and it is cyclical and it takes time. And, um, yeah. So let's try another test here. I want to do something that's not ADA. Let's, cause a lot of stuff is dropped quite a bit against Bitcoin. So it's probably not going to be overly profitable. Now let's try Bitcoin USDT and we'll mess with that. Bitcoin, Bitcoins. Cause somebody's like, do you trade with a stable coin? USD, let's do tether. And let's say we have a thousand dollars. We're going to do a fixed amount trade. And this is all paper trading. This is, or this is back testing. Sorry. So, you know, the results that you get in back testing doesn't necessarily mean it's going to, you're going to duplicate those same results. It's, you know, it's, this is all based off of like, per, like, I guess you could say perfect scenarios based on the data available in the history, in the historical market. So, <clears throat> oh, I kept it at 4% gain. Oops. Um, so <clears throat> that's up 8.3% over a 5.76% buy and hold. So that's profitable, but there were only two trades, um, which is fine because the way this thing is, is you want to go for max gain, uh, before at, it just like, it's not even possible to make trades. Like I, I play with the gain percentage to get the most out of it. See, it's 14 and 14 and a quarter percent over a 9.11 
you see this stuff up here so and it shows you the the entries and exits pow 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 it shows you right where it entered right where it exited entry exit entry so right now it would be in a trade right now because it would have entered before the pump and we'd be at even more profit getting ready to set up another trade so <clears throat> yeah if you if you've got crow trader already you make sure you update it and get that murder of crows cranking start back testing back test your favorite uh pairs and see what's possible let's set this on a 15 minute and see if i maybe get uh, a little more trade volume out of this because <clears throat> typically on a on a smaller time frame you're going to get more frequent trades but that's not always the case yeah so on a 15 minute it's not it's good let's try a uh, one hour let's try one hour over 18 months at six percent Ooh, that's a, this is basically saying i want at least the six percent gain on my trade before i exit nervous about this i haven't done this in yet Dun, 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 dun. All right, so 35.12%, but buy and hold would be at like 50, 55%. So that's not that great. Even though every trade is profitable and it's made really good profitable trades, you're, you'd have been better off just buying and holding. So let's say, what if we bump this to nine, which is insane, but we'll see. See what happens. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's taking a minute. Mm, up a little bit more. That's better. Uh, 46. Let's just, let's say 12%. <laughs> Which is gonna be insane. It'll probably I'm I'm say I'm I'm thinking at twelve percent is gonna be like no, or maybe there's one trade. But if it keeps going up, I'll keep bumping up the percentage. <clears throat> Who's the physically strongest person on crypto YouTube? Um, I'm gonna guess me. I, I don't know for sure. Yeah, so the more I pump up the gains, it's it's it just keeps going up. So I could probably I don't know, let's set this at twenty five percent. This has gotta this has gotta say it's not gonna do a trade. What up, Clarence Thomas? <laughs> uh that's funny. Uh did your wife finally get to teach you how to dance salsa? Uh no. Nope. She sure didn't. Bam, there it is. Set this up at 25% gain. Now it's up 77.44% over the buy and hold of 61. So now I'm getting gains. There's three trades over that um, 18 months. So if I were using the strategy and I just let it go over 18 months, I'd be up 77.44%. I'm telling you, this is this is gonna crush the bull market. I mean, it really is. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, seems like a d decent token to trade. Uh, how do I update Crow Trader? Get your tail in the Telegram group because the you, you're gonna download the file and swap it out. Um, you always laugh at my name it always catches me off guard off guard because i'm like clarence thomas it's just funny um how much cardano minimum to own i mean look man that that's def that's the relative question to you uh you know uh, there there is no minimum you know if you've got one you're in the game you know spend 10 cents and get you know get in the game everybody's risk to reward ratio is different i mean I, I can't tell you go out and you know do everything you can to get a hundred thousand ada like it, it i can't say that um you might not have the means of getting a hundred thousand ada or a thousand ada just do what you can average in over time you know i mean if you average in over the next six months i don't think you could lose i mean but that's my personal opinion i i, I, mean, I can't tell you what to do uh hey crow have you seen Baldur's gate 3 game since you liked uh wasteland you might like this one too hmm have i seen it yeah i already beat act one <laughs> all my guys are level four i'm already on it Baldur's gate is one of my favorite games it's like one of my favorite rpgs i've been playing since the first one but thanks for the tip though but i'm already way ahead of you brah 
Does Crow Trader provide a report for tax purposes? Maybe you already answered that. Um, you'll you you you'll be able to get that directly from the exchange you're using. Uh, Crow Trader doesn't necessarily provide that. What are the transaction fees going to look like on Card Cardano? Depends on adoption. Uh, depends on adoption. You know, it's really hard to predict. Um, there is some insight in the video that I put out this morning. So, you know, there's definitely some information there. Uh, where's Bitcoin? Mm, getting a little dip, getting a little dip on the 15 minute or minute. If Tyson and Jones are making a comeback, is Crow coming back to UFC? That's funny. I never fought in the UFC. Um, I'm too old, man. I'm just too old. If I would have got into it a lot younger, um, then I definitely... I definitely would have maybe made a run at UFC or something like that. I probably would have gotten into the UFC at some point, uh, but I'm just too old. Man, I get out of bed now and like my feet are crooking and you know, I'm like, oh, it takes me like an hour just to, I, being this big is not easy, folks. Uh, you know, a lot of people are there like, oh, you're so cool, you're so tall, you're so this, I wish I were that tall, I do this and I do that. And I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. Be this tall, be this big. Like I'm trying so hard to get down under 290. You know, I, I was at 306 for a while uh, at the beginning of COVID because I was like comfort eating all the time. And I just gained a bunch of weight. I got to 306 pounds and um, now I'm down to like 290 and I fluctuate between 290 and 293. So I've lost a good amount of weight already, but I'm trying to get down to like 265, 270 at least. And, um, and then maybe I want to start putting on some muscle and, and focusing on, on weight gain, but like a muscle gain. Um, I just, I want to be healthier. You know, I'm thinking I might even get my stepson and I into jujitsu together and start going that route. Are you taking CBD oils? Uh, Joe Rogan lives by it. No, I'm not. Uh, maybe it'd be a good, good idea to try to help sleep. I don't know. I, I just don't know anything about that stuff. I really don't. Um, some people live by it, love it, all that, but in between having a lot of XRP or change some for Cardano, couldn't tell you, really couldn't tell you. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't tell anybody like, you know, sell this to buy the, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. You know, there's one thing that I've learned, man, it's just like nothing is absolute. Like nothing. Some of the biggest, baddest projects today could be worthless tomorrow. You just don't know what's going to happen. It's still so early in the crypto space. Every dime you invest in the crypto space is risky. This is high risk, high reward. If you make a good call, that's why I always say, man, you want to invest in a bunch of different projects. The ones that do really well are probably going to make you wealthy. The ones that don't aren't going to matter when they don't. I mean, it's like, that's my philosophy. You know, I invest on the fundamentals. I try to keep up with what's happening and, and do the best I can, but nobody's right 100% of the time. And I've, I've made some really great calls on some really great projects that are well outperforming the market. And I made some really bad calls on stuff that's turned out to be downright dog shit. I mean, let's just be real. I'm not a psychic. So you have to do your own research because even a broken clock is right twice. So, you know, it's it's all about your gut. What does your gut tell you when you're researching these projects? You can't just take our word for any of it. I've done many videos, you know, saying that. You know, while some of us can sound and appear like we know everything there is to know about the crypto world, we don't. We're freaking human beings. We have lives. I have a family. You know, I have a business. I have I have a lot of different stuff going on. I can't just sit down and read articles all day long to piece together a 12-minute video full of clickbait. I just can't. I don't have that kind of time. And it, and it works. It works really well for the algo, you know, for YouTube's algorithm and getting likes and clicks. And the more bullish you are, the better and all that. I know the game. I know I can send this channel over 100,000 tomorrow probably if I really wanted to pump out like eight really clickbait click baity videos i just you know that's just not my way it's really not my way i love that you do a whole bunch of different things the nascar thing was cool been following you for over two years i like that you're all over keep the emotion and keep up the great work well thank you mars flower um i appreciate that i i really do try i i try i'm not always super exciting i don't always have a rant for everybody it's just stuff happens Crow, you were talking about TV shows. I just finished The Boys. Now, that is a great show. Yeah, that is a great show. Uh, we, we, we've been keeping up with that. Um, 
and several others. I mean, there's some really good new stuff out. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I recommend to new investors to diversify into a few top projects, but myself, I'm 100% into Cardano. I put all my eggs in one basket and watch the hell out of the basket. I feel ya. I feel ya. I, I, I would love to do the same thing, but I just, I keep fighting it. I feel like a complete idiot. I just now understand the analogy that a broken clock is right twice a day. Dear God, help me. <laughs> Wow. Well, good on you for admitting that. That's that's actually funny. I, I could use the little chuckle. Oh, boy. All right. Well, it looks like we're, we're going to get a little bit of a correction in Bitcoin's price from here. We're at 11549 Um, You know, maybe we, we touch down on this uh, moving average here. This is the 13. So, I you know, I don't know. Maybe we bounce off of that. But we it might come down and then we come come back up. I don't know. I'd love to see a twelve thousand Bitcoin again. So we'll see. But anyway, I'm starting to get really hot and dang it, it's time for lunch. So I love you guys.